a, this is, it's, it's spiritual and, and at some level very demonic, a demonic attack. We're seeing revival in Israel, we're seeing souls being saved. It's all connected together. And that's why the enemy doesn't want the people in the world to know this. My name's Carl Gallops, pastor on the Gulf Coast, and my guest, of course, is uh, Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt from Tel Aviv, Israel. Zev, it's good to have you on the show today with us. Shalom, Carl. It's uh, great to be on these programs together with you. Yeah, Looking forward to it. yeah I, I, I do too. And of course, folks, we can't have the video of Zev today, and we will do that in future programming, but he's on the road today and in an area where he just... Uh, we, we just can't get the video feed uh, to, to work properly. So we, we've got his picture up there. Most of you know who he is. So, uh, uh, But anyway, Zev, I'm so glad that you could join with us. Listen, I know that you get a lot of questions people have about the Bible and the times in which we're living and things happening in Israel and around the world and, and uh, biblical questions, theological questions. I do too. So um, I want to tell our audience that you can send in your questions to us. They can go to your website, Zeph, tell them how to reach you and, and how to send a question in to you. Messiahofisraelministries.org.net uh, or .com and just email me at the contact form or you can email me at askmessianicrabbizephporat at gmail.com. Okay. And for me, of course, it's just my name, carlgallops.com, and you'll see the contact there. There's an email address and a phone number. It'd be better for your questions to send it in email. And I would say for everyone, please, for, for Zev and I, don't send us long papers wherein you're not really asking a question. You're trying to tell us something. Just if you have a question, send in a sentence or two, uh, get right to the point, and then more than likely your question will make it to one of these programs very, very soon. And we'd like to be able to, to give you our understanding of the scriptures on it. Well, anyway, Zev, uh, let me just begin by asking you to uh, teach us a little bit, share with us, and of course, I'll interject with you, but we're, we're making this program right now, uh, I think it's the 7th of March in 2022, and so it's coming right up on the Feast of Purim, and I know a lot of uh, people are a little confused by that feast. What is that feast? It's not one of the regular seven feasts of the Lord. So why don't you take a moment and give us kind of the Orthodox view, uh, how it's usually celebrated in Israel by Orthodox, and then give us the Messianic view. And of course, Messianic, as, as you know, but I want to make sure our audience knows, that means for those that are believers in Jesus Christ and Yeshua HaMashiach, either uh, Jewish people or Gentile people, you know, so that's what Messianic means. So anyway, give us both the Orthodox view and the Messianic view. I'm going to hush and you just teach us. Absolutely, Carl, but I want to back up a little bit to what you just said about Messianic, because that's very, very important. A lot of times people think, and I get emails about this too, that Messianic means that if you're a Jew and you believe in Jesus, you're Messianic. That's true. That's part of it. But the definition of Messianic is all those under the blood of Jesus, blood of Yeshua. If you believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, is God, then you're Messianic according to the Word of God. And so it's very important to, to bring that out. I We, we joke a lot about this uh pastor carl and i say your your congregation your church is like a messianic uh baptist congregation but it is because if you're a believer in jesus you're messianic and so it's not a religion it's not a cult it's not a definition it's a biblical concept in the bible and it, i want it may be a lot new to a lot of uh, people watching this now or in the future but it's important to bring that out yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And of course, it comes from Ephesians too. You know that, but I want to, again, make sure our audience knows. That's why we call this uh, this program, this show, we call it the One New Man Ministry, the One New Man Show. I mean, uh, program, because... Uh, uh, because you are of Jewish birth, and the Hebrew language is your mother language, and you were born in Israel, you live in Israel, you minister in Israel, and all over the world. Um, I, pro I, I don't know, I've never had my DNA checked. I know you say that you think that I've got Jewish blood in me, probably, but, but you know, I was born and raised in the United States, mainly on the Gulf Coast. I've lived in many other places, but mainly on the Gulf Coast, and so, uh, you know, I, I would be identified as a Gentile, you as a Jewish person, so Jew and Gentile together. In Ephesians 2, Paul writes about this. He said, look, the Jew and the Gentile 
under the blood of Jesus Christ, they become one new man, one family under the head who is Jesus Christ. He's also the foundational cornerstone. So he's the, he's the, he's the beginning and the end. He's the foundation, the cornerstone, and he's the head. And in between, we are the new temple, Paul says, that's being built in these last days, Jew and Gentile, the one new man. Amen. Absolutely. Romans 11 speaks about this as well, the grafted into the olive tree. That's also a part of this. Uh, the Jews, uh, like me, will reject Jesus and then come back to the true word of God and become uh, believers in Yeshua and Jesus, uh, Romans eleven twenty three. And so we see that beautiful picture. And it's important to emphasize that because we're going to be launching a lot of these programs. And we want people to understand the concept, what is the one new man? What does it mean to be messianic? And so that with that understanding, we can dive into the book of Esther, which is really the, the, the account, the story of Purim, Purim. Yeah. And so the, the book of Esther, and uh, if you, I grew up as an Orthodox Jew before I believed in Yeshua and Jesus. All I knew about the story of Esther was that the, Haman uh, wanted to kill the Jewish people, and uh, God uh, used Esther, and then Haman got hanged, and then his sons got hanged later on, the Bible says. And so it's a victory of the Jewish people, but that's what the Orthodox Jews teach. It's partially right. But if we look at it deep, we see it's not just a victory of the Jewish people. It's a foreshadow from that time and a victory of the true remnant of Yeshua, the true bride of Yeshua. That's the story here. That's the true victory. And that's why in the book of Esther, it says that uh, they were to celebrate it not just forever as an ever ordinance, which means it's forever. Why is it forever? Because those under the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, are going to live forever. That's what it speaks about. Some translations in English don't use the word ever. The one in Hebrew does say ever, which shows us the beautiful picture once again of the one new man. And so the, the account, the story of Esther is the only book in the Bible where God's name seems not to be mentioned. And so when we look at the book of Daniel, when God told Daniel, do not seal up or do not roll up the scroll for the mystery of the end times has not yet come. That mystery is also found in the book of Esther, because if we look at the book of Daniel, we see that Daniel was at the, at the exact same location that uh, that Esther was in the, in the same area. And we see this in Daniel 8 two. I looked in a vision and while I was looking, I was in. Uh, Shusha, where's Shusha? That's the same place where Esther was. That's the same place where the story of Esther. And so you, you say, okay, what does that have to do with it? It has everything to do with it because it's a mystery and God's mystery is revealed. And we can see that very, very clearly here that Esther and Daniel were in the same place. Wow. Different wow. times, but in the same place. Yeah. Amazing. I, I've got to just step in and say, and I know you've got a lot more teaching to do. I, I don't know that I've ever realized that before. I mean, you just said that and it kind of stunned me. And, and of course I believe you, but I don't have my Bible in front of me. So I'm going to, you know, pull all of that together. And uh, in the future, I'll teach it and preach it. And I'll try to remember to give you credit for it. But, <laughs> but no, but that's, that's really great. I appreciate you bringing that out. Go ahead. Well, I'm paraphrasing, but it, it's found in, in Daniel chapter eight, verse two, where you okay. can see this actually. And uh, it, it's great significant because if you put together, do not scroll up the mystery because they are do not roll up for the mystery is not yet to come. And then you right. see that Daniel was there at the same time. Yeah. And then you begin to say, wait a minute, this is, there's something more deep here because what does the word, what does the word Esther mean? What does the word Esther mean? Esther, her name means hidden, means conceal. The word scroll in Hebrew means Megillah. And what does Megillah mean? It means scroll. And so we see the scroll of Esther, the Megillah of Esther. And so the word Megillah also means revelation. Right. The book of Revelation comes from the word root word scroll, which is Megillah, that which is hidden shall be revealed because Esther's name also means hidden. It means to conceal. And so we begin to see something deep here that if you don't believe in Yeshua, you don't believe in Jesus, you really can't see this depth of the Bible and all you can see is a victory, but you don't really understand who's responsible for the victory or what it foretells in, in the future. And it's huge. And I use it here in Israel as an evangelistic tool to speak to Jewish people right now before the Feast of uh, Purim, the book of Esther, uh, which is coming up in uh, the 17th of this month already. And so we're using uh, all these revelations to ask them and show them in the Bible. And they're stunned by it. They can't tell you that it's not Jewish because it's in the book of Daniel. They can't tell you that Esther, they don't want to hear it because they. it's the only book in the Bible that rabbinic Judaism doesn't have an interpretation to. Wow. 
Wow. You know why, Pastor Carl? And that's because the Jews win. Expound just a little bit more on the, the, the messianic understanding of it, how it's all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I mean, that, that's fascinating what you were saying, because of course there's the completely Jewish understanding of it, and that would be the foundational context, but it's a, it's a compound uh, vision. It's a compound prophecy. It's a compound scripture, and you and I both know what that means. We write about this a lot, and that is almost always when we come to a, a book or a passage of scripture or a prophecy, um, it has meaning for the people then, and it has meaning for God's people thereafter, but it also has fulfilled, completely fulfilled meaning in Jesus Christ, and usually it has something to do with end-time revelation. So, so uh, it, it, it expound upon that just a little bit more about how Esther just fulfills everything about who we are and the final victory and, and what that means for God's people. Well, the book of Esther is so deep. I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. You, you can talk about Esther going into the king and willing to lay down her life for the people. It's kind of like what we're supposed to do. We're, we're supposed to put the gospel first. We're supposed to lay down our life for the gospel. And she goes into the king when she knows that that king, if he lifts up that scepter, he can have her executed. And then she walks in there and she says, if I perish, I perish. Right. And then, of course, God's hand is in there. But we see something even deeper in the book of Esther uh, that shows the, the foreshadow of Yeshua, of Jesus. I mean, I've got so much here that I can speak about. Yeah. Uh, if we look at uh, the book of Esther, first of all, we need to understand who Haman was. Haman was a Haggai. And Haman was from the same root as an, as an Amalek. Now, Amalek is found where? It says in uh, Esther chapter eight, verses three and four, then Esther spoke again to the king and fell uh, and, and fell at his feet and weeped and said, this Haman, this Haggai, so we, so we know he's a Haggai and his plot to destroy the Jewish people. What's a Haggai? A Haggai is also an Amalek. We know King Haggai. We know that uh, uh, the Haggai's were supposed to be executed by, by the, by the king and they, and but that's a whole different issue here. And so the Haggai is an Amalek. What's an Amalek? Amalek is found in the, in the book of Deuteronomy where Moses was, was told that we're going to be attacked by Amalek from generation to generation. And so we see that every generation has a Haggai, has an Amalek. And so we see that the victory is always those under the blood of Yeshua, under the blood of Jesus. And for this reason, it says that we're to celebrate this feast forever and evermore. Now, it's not one of the seven feasts, but it is a feast. It is a celebration. It is a victory, just like the feast of uh, Hanukkah he is not one of the seven feasts, but we know Yeshua celebrated. Right. We know that it's a victory. And right. so and so this is this is the picture that we see over here as far as uh, as far as the victory. And it ties in with the book of Revelation. Are you, are you there? It says, and so in Esther 1-2, uh, we, we see also that uh, Nehemiah was the son of, uh, also was in Shua, uh, Sushai. Sushai is also the, the capital of the same place where, where Esther was, where Daniel was. So there's a pattern in the Bible of all these people that appear in that place. And we know that it's modern day Iran today. What do we have right now in Iran? We have a madman who wants to wipe out the Jewish people, right? right. The nation of Israel. And so we see that Amalek spirit operating behind the scenes, just like foretold to Moses, that from generation to generation, there's going to be an Amalek that's going to try to wipe out the people of God. And who are the people of God? You and I, all those under the blood of Yeshua, under the blood of Jesus. Right, 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 right. Wow. Well, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you were able to give this depth of understanding. And I've heard you preaching and teaching before on this, and I've read material that you've written about it. And I know you could go much, much deeper, but this will help people as we move into this season of Purim. And uh, prayerfully for uh, Jewish people who are not believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, pr prayerfully, they would begin to make some of these connections. Prayerfully, the Holy Spirit of God could use this. Uh, to bring Jew and Gentile to the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Apostle Paul 
um, who was an Orthodox Jew and a Pharisee through and through until he also came to faith and belief and found the living resurrected Messiah. So anyway, I pray that it'll be used for that, but also just for people of God right now, Jew and Gentile, who are already serving the Lord and know him, but they wanted to know a little bit more of the richer meaning and understanding of uh, the book of Esther and the Feast of Purim. So listen, before we close, and we've only got a few more minutes, uh, tell people about you've got a brand new book coming out. As we're doing this, it'll be brand new. It'll come out in May or June of 2022. And uh, I was blessed to write the foreword. You, you and I have written a book together called the, the Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of Messiah. That book has become a bestseller all over the world. Um, and both of our names are on the front cover. We both wrote that together and uh, published by Defender Publishing, a major uh, Christian publisher out of Crane, Missouri, connected with Skywatch Television. But your book is coming out. I want you to, folk, to tell the folks the title of it and give a, give a quick rundown of it. It's also published by Defender Publisher. You asked me to write the foreword, so I've read a lot of the manuscript, and I, I'm telling you, this is going to be a huge bestseller, brother. It's, it's just it's amazing. So why don't you tell the folks about it? Well, the book is uh, Unmasking the Chaldeanian Spirit. It speaks about uh, the Chaldeanian spirit, which is really uh, uh, the uh, demonic spirits, Amalek and everything operating behind the scenes and uh, deceiving the body of Yeshua. The Bible says that he will deceive the very elect if possible. And so that deception that's been uh, moving through generation to generation, deceiving also the congregation, also the church, also believers, this book unmasks all that. And so yeah. that's, that's uh, in general what I want to speak about. But I want to go back a little bit to Esther 5, 4, because we did mention that God's name is not mentioned there. We see God's foot, God's uh, fingerprint. But if we look at the Hebrew in Esther 5, 4, we see that God's hand is all over. God's name is mentioned in, a, in, a, uh, in Hebrew in the Bible, because it says, uh, Esther said, if it pleases the king, may the king and Haman come this day to a banquet that I prepared for him. And in Hebrew, it's Yavo HaMelech VeHaman Hayom. And the first uh, letters, Yavo, is Yud, HaMelech is He, King, Haman is Vav, and De is He, Yud, He, Vav, He, which is Yahweh. We see God's hand right there, and that's why he defended uh he defended uh, Esther, he defended the Jewish people, but he's really defending us. Although his name is not, you can't really see it, but if you look deep in the Bible, you see that God's name is actually in the book of Esther. And that's important to bring out too. Yeah, that no, that is. I've heard you teach that before. That's amazing. I'm glad you remembered to bring that up. I was going to ask you and I forgot. But uh, yeah, folks, so so listen, thanks for tuning in to this edition of the One New Man program. And um, Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt, thank you for breaking down the Feast of Purim for us. Again, the book, uh, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. So, so important for you to get this. Listen, Zev's whole testimony is in this. It's riveting. It's written like a novel. I mean, it's a it immerses you in the whole story of it. And it's, it's profound. It's mind blowing. Uh, you got to hear it. It's very supernatural. And he doesn't mind telling you the supernatural elements um, and all of the supernatural elements he speaks of uh, were witnessed by other people. And you'll, you'll read it in his book. So uh, that's there. Uh, a whole chapter on why, why he uses the term rabbi. He gets that question a lot. If you're a believer in Yeshua, why would you call yourself rabbi? Um, very, very good question, but Zev has a profound biblical answer, and he's got a whole chapter. You're going to want to read that. But then Zev in that book moves into revelation after revelation of Wow, spiritual, the end times we're living in, what Satan is up to, how he masks um, uh, these demonic hordes that he's sending out in these last days to cover up Bible truths. That's why it's called unmasking the Chaldean spirit. You're going you're gonna to discover why it's even called the Chaldean spirit. What, what in the world does that mean? When you see it, it's going to blow you away. It's connected all the way to the book of Revelation and what God pours his wrath out on. He pours it out. It says it in the Revelation. To, uh, and, all, and, and we're also going to, uh, also the book reveals the true biblical sites of where uh, Yeshua I, really walked in Israel. Yeah, I was getting ready to go there. The places he walked, the true place of his birth, the true place of his crucifixion. And I want the people to understand, these are not just your opinions or 
you know, you didn't pull them out of your back pocket. You're not just making them up so that you can say, oh, wow, look, this is, uh, this is sensational. No, you, you go into deep scholarship. I mean, you do deep word studies of the Hebrew and of the Greek, and, and you go back to scholars before us who saw this and recorded it and documented it and have written profusely about the real birthplace of Jesus. We, we know where it is. The Bible tells us. Zeb is going to show you in his book, and, and we know where he was crucified. The Bible tells us, and it's, and it's not the places that people visit in Israel. He's going to tell you why people wind up visiting wrong places throughout the Israel. There's a demon behind it. There's a spirit behind it, and it all has an end-time purpose. He's going to unfold all of that for you and so much more. That's why he calls it Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. It's an amazing book, Zev. I love it. Well, and you also, Pastor Carl, you have an uh, amazing book coming up too as well, Glimpses of Glory, and I recommend people to order that book as well. You take people through a journey, an unbelievable journey of the Gospels, of the Bible, and uh, there's a lot, a lot of uh, amazing stuff over there. It's like reading, when you read the book, it's like actually being in a movie. You take, you take people back in time. They can actually feel that they're walking together with Yeshua. They can actually feel the Bible. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Glimpse of glory. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks. Yeah, I wrote it in novel format. I wrote it like a movie script, truly. Um, in fact, I've had several, several people that have pre-read it and editors and et cetera. And they've all told me this should be made into a movie. And I pray so maybe that would be cool. And it's not just a, another story about the life of Jesus. Nothing no, wrong not, with it. It takes people, it takes people into a different dimension. You're literally yeah. sitting, reading this and you're in a different dimension. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. It goes all the way up, literally, to the book of Revelation, John on the island of Patmos, then John on his deathbed after he's released from Patmos. Then you go with John behind the veil as he goes into glory and meets uh, his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, face to face. I mean, from the Garden of Eden to the, to the Apostle John and everything in between. I mean, you're on the boat with Noah and his family. You're in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus and the disciples. You're at the foot of the cross at the crucifixion and on and on and on. You're there when the church is born. You're there when the resurrection takes place. And so it's just this sweeping panoramic of Genesis to Revelation, and it's called Glimpses of Glory, because all the way through, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to give you glimpses in your spirit of the glory of what God has done and what he is doing in our lives, but more importantly, what he's getting ready to do. So thanks for bringing that up. I wasn't even going to talk about my book. And, and I want our audience to know, Zev and I talk about this all the time. We don't write books to sell books. In fact, Zev and I both give away tons of books to ministries, missionaries, things like that. In fact, I've just shipped out a bunch from, from our offices the other day that we just gave to people. Now, we can't give them all away because they cost money, and it costs the publishers, and it costs us, and we have to keep our offices stocked, but we do. We do. We, we're, we're not in this for you know, selling books. We write these books because this stuff comes out of the years of our study and research and teaching and preaching. And there are questions and things that people ask for all the time. So we write them, put them in books, and we can hand the book to people. We can send the book to people. And we can say, here, now you've got it. Not only do you have our teaching and preaching and, and, and all of that, but you've got the references, the resources. You've got the backup for what we're saying. So am, am I right, Zev? You want to add something to that? And then we've got to go. Look, the only reason uh, I write books, you write books, is to get the true word out there. It's, it's difficult for us sometimes to answer everything on an email or to answer everything one by one. And so the book just reveals that. We just pray that the, our books uh, bless people, as I know your books have blessed many, many people over the year. Yeah. And, and over the years, and that's what it's all about, getting the yeah. true word out. That's what it's it all is. about. It's all about Yeshua. It's not about us. It is. That's the only reason we write books. Yeah. And listen, let me give another teachable moment here because people ask a good question. They ask, well, look, if you've got all these revelations and this understanding, why don't you just put them on the internet and give it away to the world for free? Okay. That's a good, that's a good question. And it's a good idea. And we do put a lot of our material out there on the internet for free always, but books are a different matter because 
if let, let, let me just tell the folks. So we could we could take the content of your book, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit, and just word for word, just put it on the internet on a site, and people could just go get it. Okay. But here's what would happen. You would not get any television interviews, any radio interviews, and we do international television together. We we have some of the shows we're on have the potential to reach billions, and that is no exaggeration. In reality, they reach many, many millions, but they go into the homes of billions. So you never know who's watching at any time. And we're on several shows like that together all the time. So if it was just out there on the internet, those big shows that, that, that reach the whole world, they would never call you or me and say, you know, come on our show and tell us about what you put on the internet. But if you write a book and it's published by a major publisher, and this is, Defender Publishers is a major publisher. It's not a vanity press. It's not a self-publication press. We send our manuscripts in. They do the editing. They do everything. And, and, and then they publish the books. And so that's the other thing. We can't take the book and then put it on the internet because we're under contract to a major publisher and we would be stealing from them. So it's kind of a complex thing. But what I try to tell people is, look, when you've got a book in your hand, you can put it in your library. You can give it to somebody else. Uh, if you tell somebody you need to go to Zev or Carl's website and read this cool stuff, most people won't do that. But if you give them the book, they will read it. And if God blesses them, they will share it with others. Plus, major media will pick up on it because to them, it's academic. It's real. It's not just something somebody splattered out over a web page. Um, it's, it's been published, it's been hard worked, it's been edited, it's been some peer reviewed. Um, so that's why we do this. It's, it's, again, if you guys only knew how much we <laughs> gave away, um, we really do. So I, anyway, I just wanted to use this as a teachable moment because we do both have books coming out and we want people to know about them because we believe they're going to be helpful. We're not trying to sell books. It's just, if people don't know, then they won't know to get them. Go ahead, Zev. Absolutely. I mean, that once again, it's all about getting the word out there. And if it, it, we don't want to be on television for ourselves, we want to be on television to get the word out there. The exactly more tools right. we have to get the word out there, the better it is. We live in a fallen world. Time is running out. You and I don't set dates, but we know that Jesus, Yeshua is returning soon. Amen. And the true word has to get out. Bro, we've got so many more shows to do. I mean, and and the and the more I talk about something else, you come back and say, "Hey, I forgot something." And because you you've you know God's blessed you, you've got so much um, in your heart and in your soul to share. So thank you for sharing all of this with you today. Maybe next time we're on, we can have you in a video stream with us. But I appreciate you doing this uh, audio stream with us today. And folks, thank you for tuning in again. Get your questions in. Go to carlgallops.com, use the email, or go to messiahofisraelministries.net.org.com. It'll go to the same place. And in the meantime, we're going to do more of these shows. Thank you for tuning in today. May the Lord richly richly bless you and keep you always. We'll see you next time. One new Amen. Man. Shalom.